Welcome to this video editorial for a bumper issue of Journalism Studies, Volume 13, Number 4, August 2012, which has 10 research-based articles exploring aspects of journalism in Hong Kong, Ireland, Pakistan, America, Sweden and Australia. Matt Carlson from St. Louis University kicks off the issue with a terrific essay in which he recalls the death of Doyen newscaster Walter Cronkite in 2009 and the nightly ritual for millions of Americans watching him read the news to invoke and argue the need to include attributes of ritual within a more complex and nuanced understanding of journalistic authority. Monica Jeff-Pierre writes about the crowding out effect she observed in her 30-year content analysis of Swedish TV news, which illustrated how the reporting of environmental issues was replaced by economic issues and war and armed conflicts in times of crisis. Jane Johnson and Carolyn Graham analyzed 5,000 articles in the Australian and Sydney Morning Herald to establish trends in newspaper writing styles and narrative techniques. Carlos Barrera offers a comparative history of journalism education in the United States and Europe before and after World War II, while Michael Carlson and Krista Clearwell explore the evolution of multimedia features in broadsheet and tabloid news sites in Sweden via content analysis and interviews with journalists. Juan Ramon Monoz Torres offers a philosopher's account and attempt to clarify the seemingly endless misunderstandings which too frequently inform discussions about journalistic objectivity. Francis Lee uses critical discourse analysis to study the remediation of political talk radio by newspapers in Hong Kong. Anthony Corley uses framing analysis to identify key themes and discussions in Irish newspaper accounts of the economic crisis in Ireland 2008-10 while Roger Dickinson and Bashir Mamon consider the effects of press clubs in Pakistan on the practice of journalism. Finally, Corey Armstrong, Michael Boyle and Douglas MacLeod examine reports of protests in Asia, North America and the Middle East to illustrate how coverage reinforces gender stereotypes. All of this and the book reviews section also bursting at the seams. Well, here in Cardiff we're enjoying a rather good spell of weather after months of rain and floods, so this issue offers the perfect companion. Take it in the garden to get ensconced in the shade and while away a long afternoon and evening interrupted only by a nice pot of tea around five o'clock. Does it get any better? I'll see you again, I hope, in November, when a slightly delayed but special double issue featuring papers from the Future of Journalism Conference 2011 will be the subject of my editorial review. See you then. Look forward to it.